Hello friends, a very warm welcome and in this series we are taking up the political science paper 1 with section A and B and we will try to go through what are the approaches and what ideas are reflected. First question says comment on the following in about 150 words each and the question says normative approach in political science you have to comment on. So political science is study of theories of different approach to understand the relationship between society and individuals that is straight. Normative approach is based on the principles of do's and don'ts. That is prescriptive, value-based, uh, Socratic de deductive method, logical argument, and uh, norms to be followed. So we could have first actually tell about that normative method is one of the primary methods, or it is the principal method. Uh, you know this approach or this method is how much uh, impacting, effective, being influenced by the other political science theories. Anyways, for example, theory of justice based on theory of education and. Uh, and uh, distribution of property and it is also talking about that uh, what ideas were there of Plato he had uh, you know he had uh, spoken about the idea of philosopher king and ideal state normative approach could not address the problems in society in the post world war ii leading to the criticism by behavioralists for example, David Estin, he called for making political science close to social sciences via quantification, interdisciplinary discourse, value neutral, but slowly due to uh, over quantification of data and again normative approach appeared in the post behavioral, uh, you know, to various uh, in the time period uh, and it is providing credibility to the political science. For example, Rawls theory of justice, normative in political behavior. So the question arises that, uh, you know, that was uh, that's what I was saying in the beginning of the question that normative approach, what kind of role it had played, it is an overarching approach or it, the approach is uh, superficial in nature or approach is having certain lacuna or certain speciality. So that would have given us more approach and leverage as far as, uh, uh, you know, comment is concerned. Multicultural perspective on rights. So rights can have different perspectives, basic, rights are basic contract negotiated between a societal member and state, rights are evolved from first generation to third generation through, uh, you know, political science as it, it is seeing political science as awareness of citizen. It is here that multicultural perspective of rights laid down principles of community centric guide that an idea of differentiation, differentiated uh, citizenship, uh, subjectivity in thinking and experience, Frank Frozen's experience uh, is an example over here, universal theory of human right, in Eurocentric and not having inclusivity and to include the multiple interpretation of rights. So our multiculturalism principle has been uh, uh, given, uh, you know, a skeptical look because of its uh, not acceptance of subjectivity in some universal ideas of justice, giving community power more power than the individual and communitarian power uh, leading to the patriarchal domination of uh, men within group and idea of different citizenship affecting the unity, fraternity within the society. Thus, multiculturalism has to be followed with the idea of protecting individuals along with the group rights. For example, Article 25, that is freedom of religion for individual, Article 26, community rights to freedom of religion. So this answer is definitely much more broader and uh, bringing different perspectives on track. State of nature as state of war, the statement by Hobbes. So Hobbesian is a way of the prominent thinker of liberalism, qualified liberalism, his individualism theory is limited by state. This has been due to nature of human in the state of nature. The state of nature, when there was uh, no societal or state obligation due to egoism or people minded or even self-centered nature of human, they were fighting war among themselves. So that is what is the state of nature. The whole scenario was based on the right is might, survival of the fittest. So, to avoid state of war, people came together in order to pay attention to self preservance of life and prosperity. This led to formation of state based on social contract. Now, the individual had unlimited political obligation to the absolute state. This state of nature, as uh, with respect to state of war, leading to the formation of absolute state, but it has been also been criticized by Locke. According to him, humans are uh, by nature they are cooperative, and that is why through only cooperation one can say the state can be formed. Whereas Rousseau had stated that the state of nature, human beings were more uh, pure in heart, which got corrupted due to 
societal influence the sobian principle is based on animal nature of human in the state of nature so many ideas are reflected and uh, flow is also there and the ideas are actually trying to showcase the question Foucault's concept of power, the concept of power do not have single definition. It is uh, an evolving concept and uh, it is context to subject from the whole single uh, dimension of power to, you know, Lucas third dimension of power. According to Foucault's concept of power, it is neither executive nor developmental. It is uh, diffused and uh, just like uh, money in the economy, it has no origin but proves in the channel. A change of features include knowledge is power as it creates discourse about objective and con context. Discourse of streams create legitimacy and domination over different interpretation of truth. Governmentality is uh, which deals with the citizen as subject via surveillance and statistical study. Because according to him, power can be developmental or coercive. It depends on the use by the person or the state concerned. Again, the ideas are reflected, so we can say that we are definitely on track. Decline of political theory. So political theory is a continuous relevant subject as highlighted by Isa Berlin, but once it's, uh, it had faced decline in the post World War II, as stated by David Eston and Charles Merrin, and criticism of uh, histories and uh, you know other ideas, and it is stated by David Eston and Charles uh, Merrin, the criticism of history and normaticism of theories. They criticize political theory for not meeting the requirements of society in solving new challenges in the post World War, unlike sociology and political economics. Therefore, they laid down principles of behavioralism. Data quantification, empiricism, value neutral, so that relevance of political science can be made when it is closer to social science. But due to over qualification, over quantification of data and not evolving new relevant political theories, David Eston again criticized political theory. Uh, we may move forward and see that uh, the ideas, what the ideas of relevance are missing. He said that methodologies uh, one strengthened on methodologies uh, strengthened rather than theories. So started the era of post behavioralism which focuses on normative values in behaviorism, interdisciplinary discourses. Thus, political theory maintained its relevance in changing world. Even now, it is reinventing. So the question was asking actually about the decline of political theory. You have wanted to comment. So this decline of, uh, of the one kind of structure and the one kind of principles is definitely true as far as political science is concerned it is uh, ever evolving that is why one can one has to trace that how the original classical structure got declined that means it got remolded and it it evolved again comment on the following in one fifty words imprint of the british constitution on the indian constitution the indian constitution making has been a part of the evolution historically from social societal traditional and through national movement, it erupted some basic, uh, basic uh, institutional structure from the British constitution, parliamentary democracy, as it is the House and Rule, equality before, equality before law, Government of India 1935, structure of federal and uh, you know court and emergency, all India services and bureaucracy, but still it maintained its originality, which is beyond narrow imprint of the British colonialism. India had con India had a constitution which required to meet the aspirations of nation. Provincial autonomy with the centralized state that is quasi federalism, it was also suited to Indian diversity, which was uh, hugely complex than British. That is why reservation to vulnerable sections, doctrine of basic do doctrine of basic structure and the constitutional morality based on Indian suitability for education and Bhakti case. The Indian constitution is unique and comprehensive document which has been tested in time. It had led to the demonetization. It led to the demonstration of men to the, the grassroots level. So the question was demanding actually what was what are the imprints of the British yeah, British constitution on the Indian constitution. So one had to actually uh, stick oneself towards that how the British and how uh, you know uh, we had taken so many elements and ideas from them and how we had uh, Followed it, for example, uh, the parliamentary system within that, the cabinet system, and then even the question of Rajya Sabha when you talk about House of Lords, and then uh, to bicameral is definitely over here, and then what is the you know role of president? What are the common factors in the judicial system and uh, certain conventions which we had taken, certain customs 
then uh, the concept of white paper budget so constitution uh, is taking up so many uh, ideas and uh, that is what we had to focus and the philosophy along with it that would have been more justified environmentalism of the poor environmentalism is protection of the environment and conservation based on third generation human rights principle based on sumitra narayan the third india had a different stand of environment movement so sumitra narayan ji se pehle bhi hua hai ho raha hai illumination from jang jangal zameen nabada bachao in environment as a tradition customs for example protection of sacred groups in chipko movement bottoms of education and and the deliberation led by civil society hasdev mining plant protest in chatisgarh 2023 use of local language art and tradition it is heard that the indian state adopted policy of uh, conservation keeping in mind the tribal welfare and uh, forest conservation act and environmental impact act 2006 and so on whereas in western nation environmentalism of which is based on urban class activism corporate led civil society structure pressure group so here environmentalism of the poor could have different directions even environmentalism poor uh, of the poor uh, also reflect the fact that they had nowhere else to go and they want to sustain in their native areas and they want to continue with their customs which are forcefully or which are otherwise being changed so that is why uh, environmentalism of the poor is uh, very much grounded and it is not uh, looking forward to any kind of radical changes in their ecosystem and for that since 1950s we had small small movements so even in case of silent valley or even in case of andhra pradesh even in case of uh, you know the role by rajinder singh the waterman of india or even uh, we can bring the examples of uh, certain uh, you know uh, uh, principal in certain persons who had played very important role uh, in preserving uh, the germplasms and preserving the original seeds of different kinds of uh, uh, classical plants millets and so on and they have continued growing them in their backyards and also uh, when and whenever they are getting into space this showcases that environmentalism of the poor will not only be just any movement but it is inculcated in their day to day life those ideas i think would have made a little difference function the district planning committee district planning committee when local governance and report amendment act district based de decentralized planning within citizen participation sending report to the state so function it is asking mobilization of resources inclusive development including well due to rise of pastoral no due to rise of uh, para statal bodies like service board spv and the pvv model not not including representatives of smart city capacity building of staff so the answer could have been molded a little better if you if we are able to bring certain example for example when you are talking about uh, uh, you know a smart city then you can bring the example of indore or even in case of environment one can bring the example of you know dantewada or even uh, certain other a resource rich district like bellari capacity building also like solapur some model could have also been mentioned uh, locals uh, do not participate within leading to the non representative attitude of bureaucracy so we have to only talk about that how the function of uh, district planning committee is becoming very integral to the aspirations of the people even in case of aspiration districts program none of the uh, district would have been successful without the help of dpc the so district planning committee according to orf need to be made uh, need to be need to be made uh, niti ayog uh, like what niti ayog says that that the state institute of transformation as a district level so this must have been the approach to the answer uh, rather than the uh, you know rather than the classical or you can say the run of the mill approach satyagraha and indian nationalism indian nationalism is an uh, is an encompassing nationalism due to participation of uh, masses in large numbers in the national movement indian national movement national movement national indian national movement was able to uh, you know create a kind of a uh, uh, environment where everyone was looking forward to their own independence so that is why we are saying uh, this is uh, you know participation not of the large number participation of each single individual in one way or another 
the national movement according to bibi jindal was a rainbow of coalition of the of uh, uh, divergence diverge interest groups and this was this this was made possible because of gandhi satyagraha which had basic uh, basic essential elements of ahimsa and non violence that is agree the proactiveness was also there so satyagraha had uh, wider national uh, movement by uh, being a commutative it was spiritual context it was a uh, You know, it was having a, a, a symbolism also, or mobilization of uh, people were possible. For example, Charka is an example of the burning of uh, foreign troops. Is also another example. Use of religious symbols, uh, traditional values, and Satyagraha was a glue which made the national movement inclusive. But it had uh, had its uh, you know what we can say that adhering to the principle was very tough. So this was not uh, in the case for all. That is the way communist uh, Hindu Mahasabha, Muslim communist movement, different way that I agree. so satyagraha for the question says satyagraha and 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 in the nationalism so how satyagraha directly and indirectly it is forcing british and changing the policies and also approach that must have been brought like uh, dadabhai noroji when he is speaking about uh, you know we want uh, self government like the way of the other british colonies uh, and we want to be uh, having the internal administration in our control in our dominion That is why they will be asking for dominion status. This was also linked with Satyagraha, though it was not directly said like that. So even revolutionaries and uh, the communist socialist, everyone is actually inspired to do something for the nation. So it is in this context that Satyagraha uh, should have been seen. National Commission of Minorities, 1992 Statutory Body Act is there. Several functions are there. Have power of civil court and uh, all direct, uh, you know, justice, access, comment, uh, advice for government policy, call on expert opinion. Then it is carrying out survey and education report of uh, for inclusion. It worked as an eye, uh, as an eye for the social welfare principle of the minorities from the government. It is a non-constitutional body. It is generally politicized at times, and its action and uh, direction is not followed in spirit. Minority has not been defined to and so to increase the power of and see and focus must be on being constitutional, uh, you know, uh, constitutional status. So as to capacity building. Also, again, the basic principle that like awareness must be there, and secondly, it must carry on the workshops. It must carry on the you know what you have what you are speaking about the other uh, thinkers and uh, like the idea of justice, idea of liberty, idea of. Uh, Fraternity is we uh, can be promoted and the minorities if they are aware of rights they can better contribute to the development of society so these ideas are missing. Success of contemporary democracy lies in the state limiting its own power. Explain. So the state is uh, the multifaceted system in energized or you can say in, uh, it is uh, equipped uh, or it is empowered by the. the social contract between citizen to govern themselves within with legal boundaries and the, the success of contemporary government lies on the priority of for by and for the people rather than by and for the people i think more appropriate statement should have been minimum govern government maximum governance you know government's role is not to be there it must be only enabler its job is not to intervene so for the state to abide by the limitation of power but by the and like uh, The first is, uh, you know, the resurgence of democratic sentiment based on Kishore and Bharti case. No, the democratic sentiment is always there, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the idea of uh, minimum uh, government and maximum governance is uh, beginning from the very beginning. That is why uh, we had such a robust institutions, doctrinal due process. That is why doctrinal due process also evolved over time. Its interpretation has evolved. adhering to the new liberalism minimum government maximum one that you are writing here and uh, delivering reforms based on uh, milton friedman's and uh, american upholding the fundamental rights of the citizens and enforce the spirit of democracy in practice this is a success of uh, contemporary democracy uh, that is practiced in usa india uk etc however when the state expands and overreaches jurisdiction wave injustices are obviously there but this is not uh, what the question is asking to say Uh, unlawful emergency period uh, was obviously a, 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 a blunder it was wrong and that is why we must take lesson and hybrid system of pakistan where military system party control of cup uh, of the party control of uh, you know government in china this state control um, and uh, the public and private space is blurred and democratic ideas are repeated so successful implementation line of democracy state can time and again 
Little bit position. So uh, again, the question got little got carried away because uh, the question is saying that how uh, the goal of the government is not like that. So for example, if you see here, Indian state although have followed the liberalization, privatization, globalization in several fields, but it 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 is at the core of the spirit of welfareism, PM, KY, PM, JBI, and so on. Yes, the examples are here. There is a constant uh, experimentation. To the use of power, which can be uh, ex ex uh, which can be you know extractive or developmental. Rather than that, you can say that uh, the government constantly strives for the fact that uh, there must be maximum benefit to the people at any cost. So that is why that uh, idea and state we would have taken, and uh, the legitimacy of uh, the legitimate use of power is limiting its form. Like Hana Ardent is saying. The power to the people uh, when it is being there, it must be legitimate. So uh, that's fine. ECA 1955 and all that has also been mentioned. So it could have been a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, if I say the question that uh, contemporary democracies, success of contemporary democracies. So, so the successful, uh, you know, continuation, whether it is France, whether it is UK, whether it is India, whether it is Germany. They have limited their own, uh, you know, uh, intervention in different ways. So rather than who have not been able to do so, I think uh, that is another shortcut. So we we must focus upon the process that how contemporary democracies uh, they are a charming and a brilliant example, like the U.S. In spite of its own inherent contradiction of uh, Senate and also, uh, you know, the representatives, the so popular vote, and uh, yeah, you know the the the. the President being chosen by the Senate, the numbers. Similarly, in case of uh, India, it is uh, the coming up of the government, and then uh, uh, we are actually uh, not politicizing each and everything and not looking forward to a shortcut. So the answer would have been, you know, more uh, beautifully represented because uh, India is also liberalizing itself. Uh, Singapore, France, Germany, UK. Though there is a wave of uh, you know protectionism, but then the state limiting its own power, so human rights violation and even taking away of uh, rights of the poor, vulnerable section, underprivileged. So that is what the answer would have focused more. Rawls' idea of liberal self is too individualistic. Explain in this context the communitarian critique of the Rawls theory of justice. Theory of justice has been an evolving concept from the platonic justice to the raw theory of justice. Royal used the wheel of ignorance and original position came up with basic liberty, equality of opportunity, different principles in distribution of justice. He had used primary good of individual as a marker of justice. The whole uh, premise is based on the protecting individual uh, more than a, more than what we can say uh, as a society. Equality and distributive justice and thus uh, the theory had been uh, Criticized by communitarian principle of uh, uh, you know uh, idea of justice and uh, Michael Sandel theory of uh, you know the simulated self. Raoul's idea is too individualistic as uh, individual belongs to community before he or she is an individual. And what about his responsibilities towards community? Raoul consider anyone having equal rational mind for uh, you know. Uh, for primary good, Rawls had not included labor at home or societal restrictions against women's capability. Rawls had not included the, uh, you know, uh, not included the complexity in primary good distribution. For example, some it can be status, fame, whereas for others, materialistic belonging. Thus, Rawls' idea has uh, element of individualism in start to end. His idea serves individualistic thinking. From the perspective of state, so based on uh, community in criticism, Rawls accepted certain limitations of uh, complexity in primary good choice and distribution. But his ideas of justice is a landmark in protecting individuals from state and societal intervention in his core domain of life, liberty, and uh, dignity. Other thinkers like Mausik, Walzer have come up with other theories based on Rawls theory of justice as a base. So. Uh, Fine, uh, there is a criticism, there is a limitation reflected by the Rawls theory of justice over here. And uh, we can say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, communitarian critique we could have kept in the center, 
which is definitely is being reflected, but then a little bit of more polishing would have helped us more. Thread of relevance in post behavioralism advocates the importance of action in science. Analyze. So, credo of, uh, you know, credo of, uh, we will start by looking at the answer first. Uh, it starts with the phases and principles. No. It post behavioralism. Post behavioralism had emerged after behavioral revolution in 1960s, led by David Edmund and, and uh, Charles Murian. Behavioralism was based on beyond normative to empiricism, value neutralism, qualitative quantification of data, and correlation between uh, with the multidisciplinary perspective. There were this was to make political science relevant and to emerging challenge. It was also to make loose sociology close to sociology and economics and behavioral science. However, the credo and credo of relevant speech, David Aston highlighted core problem of behaviors. It was losing the element of political science, uh, over quantification of data, scientists sitting in irony to ivory tower, uh, perfecting methodology rather than uh, theory. Thus, the importance of normative values for just action of political science was put forward. So, post behavioralism had uh, uh, both normative plus behavioralism in theory, it became more relevant than ever. New theories could uh, address uh, the emergence, uh, the emerging problem of society. Ross theory of justice, an idea of distribution, and uh, you know uh, what I should say. I read this word. Uh, feature critical theory developing as module for uh, intersectionality, capacity approach of uh, capability approach of Amrita Sen focusing on capacity building action to achieve economic justice. But the concept of morality. And norms become again useful to assess the uh, established uh, political structure. For example, if democracy is the best model, what constitutes it to become inclusive and how to, uh, you know, how to achieve the same. And thus, post liberalism again uh, brought political science to relevance, uh, to relevance in, in, in words of Visa Berlin. Uh, the political science is ever evolving subject. So, credo of, uh, credo of relevance. Uh, that is a very very important aspect and one has to analyze that because it was, it was analyzing that uh, kind of relevance in post behavioralism so action science action science uh, would have been uh, it is being extreme but it would have been more simple and directly attacked that would have been better fascism play displays an ambivalent stance towards parliamentary democracy explain we have to see that whether certain elements of fascism are inherent into parliamentary democracy also or whether it becomes a vegetarian power, that is what the idea is. So, fascism principle has boldly stated that under nothing, uh, uh, stated under nothing beyond the state, all for state and state, okay, fine. That is a, a statement given by Mussolini. The idea of fascism is based on the extreme form of collectivism to achieve the gap of state. And it uh, and uh, it uh, the idea originated from the Hegel ethical state idealism and Frederick Nietzsche's will to power. Where where there is collectivism and extreme power to authority, then the chances of democracy is minimum. Thus, fascism in principle is ambivalent towards parliamentary democracy. So, ambivalent word is a positive word. That is why we are nice to see that it is actually accepting certain elements of uh, parliamentary democracy when it comes to fascism also, as parliament democracy required deliberative nature of uh, citizen culture, which is uh, not found in the fascist state. Today, control of power, the public and the private life is, uh, uh, you know, is mentioned and it is saying freedom of expression is practiced in parliamentary democracy based on fundamental rights doctrine. Here is total thought control, third dimension of power. This, uh, you know, Lucas, it is giving examples, civil society and NGO cannot work outside the fascist doctrine. But the question says ambivalent. Why it is saying ambivalent? That is one has to pick up. Ambivalent, uh, one interpretation is that you are agreeing with certain ideas, certain elements, and you don't have any problem with that. So, representative democracy, that is fine, vote is there, free and fair election there, but like fascism, in parliamentary democracy, there can be promotion of majoritarian ideas, there can be promotion of uh, certain kind of set of ideas, there can be promotion of certain kind of set of uh, people, religion, and, and so and so forth. That is why it is ambivalent. So, like fascism, uh, there can be a totalitarian ideas in parliamentary democracy also. That is what I think uh, we could have taken up better. 
The point of democracy is opposed to war, opposed to war as the economy prefers peace and diplomacy, whereas for fascism, war and economy. So obviously, if you want to contrast between what is fascism and what uh, fascism and what is parliament democracy, you will not find a single common element. But the question says fascism had been ambivalent. So that is what uh, we would have to look into it again, and uh, we have to understand what the question is. It is demanding one party, one leader. So in parliamentary also, you can have charismatic leadership. You can have also less deliberation. You can have you can also have meetings, meetings and committees, and but they can be bypassed. So that is what the question uh, actually wanted. Thus, uh, parliament uh, was parliament was a rubber stamp. So in parliamentary system, can uh, in parliamentary democracy, can parliament become a rubber stamp? This is what the question actually we want to want to probe and want to uh, understand. And uh, we are going in a different direction. So, parliament to survive and to re-energize. Complete annihilation of fascism was required with the effort of allied forces. And still, fascism as a creative, destructive idea is alive, but marginalized in parliamentary democracy. To maintain the strength of democracy, the life, citizens, and constitution to be followed in spirit. So that this statement that fascism is a crazy, is creative, destructive idea, which is still uh, ma marginalized and it is present in parliament democracy. I think this is what we have to see because uh, again I am saying that uh, you know ambivalent when we say so uh, ambivalent is the key word over here and uh, uh, we must had. Uh, you know, taken due, uh, uh, due, due, I should say due course correction because, uh, uh, you know, when, when I'm ambivalent towards something, then I would say that I'm agreeing up to certain aspects. I'm agreeing up to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, following uh, certain things similar, having, uh, you know, uh, having uh, agreeing also, and I may not be agreeing to certain things also. So choose and pick and choose. That is what other word we can say. Coming to the next question, affirmative action policies draw as much strong criticism as support. I agree with that. Affirmative action policies draw as much strong criticism as support. Analyze the statement in context of equality. Correct. So it's a very good example if one seen in, in context of India, because we have reservation, then we have a, a demand for merit and so forth. So the equality is a contested subject between affirmative action, that is equity, equality in subjective. Several theorists have come up with their interpretation of equality and uh, theory of soul, equality in the soul, equality in state, equality as uh, equity, Rao's theory, difference principle. As to come up with equality, it is important to accept the differences in privileged society starting from the birth. I think the question was demanding, uh, you know, affirmative uh, action. And now equality is linked to that. So where is societal restriction privilege based on position artificial inequality? Thus, affirmative action is required. I'm not asking whether it is required or not. It is asking that uh, you know there are stands basically. So notion of equality is supported by many opportunities, fair distribution, resources, all different principles. It recognizes historical societal privilege injustice to make society more equal. For example, reservation-based uh, Dr. Ambedkar's notion of equality as basic principle of human rights and equality like personal theory of school Plato based on the principle and yeah, you know, schemes, uh, welfareism, uh, laid on by state scholarship subsidies and uh, one little sections. Our affirmative action had been criticized by strong words by theory of entitlement by Nietzsche, who states that man's labor state is his, and uh, there is not right, there is no right of state to redistribute and to violate man's liberty. Affirmative action creates, uh, you know, seeking attitude, efficient redistribution of wealth. I think fine, good effort is there, but the that the wedge is there, or there is a kind of a uh, artificial uh, you know uh, artificial uh, gap between the two uh, paragraphs and two uh, parts of the answer equality principle is legally equally followed the however given the context uh, threat societal has become highly unequal by your wealth and prestige it is the repression of state to adopt affirmative action so the definitely the question is demanding that uh, those who favor why they favor and those who don't favor what is their what is their uh, you know what is their demand what is their uh, what is their idea that why they do not actually uh, you know uh, stand with that so strong criticism and strong support so strong criticism when the people are ready to you know go any beyond affirmative action policies whether it is with respect to uh, minority whether it is with respect to poor whether it is with respect to female and those who uh, support it they are bringing the government back to power 
So affirmative action policy is uh, like 10% for AWS and uh, then caste census is being demanded. So in context of equality, that is what I think a little bit more structural uh, uniformity would have really helped us more enlightening and more suitable. Eurocentrism is both the target and the motive force of the post-colonial political theory. Eurocentrism is both the target and motive force of the post-colonial political theory. So let's see what is the post-colonial support theory. Is a part of the critical theory where during post behavioral uh, resolution, important theorist, uh, uh, you know, they are uh, that is Gayatri uh, Spivak's uh, subalternism with uh, uh, you know, in Charles differenti differentiated citizenship and Edward Said's Orientalism. It is shaped for post colonialism using the base of Foucault's theory of power and Derrida discussion theory and critical feminism by uh, Darwin, uh, critical feminist, not Darwin, Darwin. Post-colonialism is based on the idea that uh, colonies' experience and voice need to be listened for that I agree. Colonized people in a perpetuated uh, perspective is taken for uh, macro discourse of existing framework. That is also a good point. Based on these uh, core ideas, Eurocentrism is targeted, used as a motive force. Eurocentrism is a theory of development or, or justice, creates enforced universalism without uh, including post-colonial societies and lands and uh, experience, for example, Frank Perron. Western Euro theories have power and other uh, old discourse causing shared relations with the reality of societies, that is cast by voice powers of vulnerable societies, one dimensional uh, you know, lens of uh, Eurocentric uh, uh, Eurocentric courses that, that is bringing injustice to the post-colonial societies, the idea of democracy is enforced in Afghanistan, Iraq, the power over okay that is the next uh, the power over post uh, uh, colonial uh, is not just new colonial uh, institution new colonial institution through language interpretation thus post colonial theorists came up with the more uh, inclusive understanding from post colonial society and lens that is uma basin is saying on gender justice environmentalism manna shiva multiculturalism homi bhava however they also have certain limitations like subjectivity no objective put in discourse, more adherence to universalism in some idea. They both uh, uh, East and West values need to be synced for human development, as highlighted by Amr Pesin. So I think uh, good effort is over here. A little bit of more course correction is required. That is what is going to help us. The part two of the same series uh, we will do in our next session. Thank you very much.